buildings and grounds projects. Uh, first one is the bleachers up here. Should have got an estimate on yeah. some, some I costs. Had a, um, sheet that I laid out in front of you. I think each of the board members. I can. And did every board member get one of these? Okay. Um, there are four options. Um, first of all, I'll back up. Uh, when we began this discussion over a year ago about bleacher repair. I don't have the option for one. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Doug, did you get one of these? The one I emailed you? Yeah. Um, we began talking about repair that needed to be, that needed to take place, and one of the things we did was had um, the um, consultant who's an engineer works with EMC Insurance, and we asked that consultant to come because EMC is a carrier of our insurance for our district. Um, and uh, he came to look at it just based on safety and code. Uh, our conversation was not about um, taking everything out. It was about the fact that what we had wasn't safe and we needed to make some repairs, but we really didn't know enough about the code to make the judgment about what was going on. So in your book packet, I think, are the front and backs of three or four sheets of papers that he has that have pictures and some comments uh, related to, um, to that work. Uh, his recommendation to us was, um, if you're going to do something with these, you really have to have someone who's an engineer, an architect, or a licensed or certified bleacher repair replacement person. Um, in fact, when uh, Troy Graham, who is the person who does that kind of work, came to look. He was asking some questions out there. Uh, Bruce, for instance, about some pieces that had been added on his handrails. And it's just like, things like this will have to come out because those don't need code. And Bruce said, well, we put them on, and we used them the way they were, and we did that. And he's like, that's OK. But he said, I just want you to know that doesn't need uh, safety code. Um, so I talked to Larry and just said, I don't know who to contact related to somebody who could successfully do this. He said, well, I don't work with companies that do it. I'll see what I can find. And he gave me two company names, um, Riser Inc. out of Waukee and then a company from Illinois. And I contacted both companies. The company from Illinois has never responded. And Troy Graham, who works um, for Riser Inc., is the person who came out about two weeks ago now. Um, Bruce Peterson, um, Troy from that company, myself, and Dave Sands um, uh, met out at the football field. and. He looked everything over, looked at the, uh, the seven sections of bleachers that are on the home football uh, section side, looked at the visitor bleachers, looked at the softball bleachers, um, because we've got some bleachers that we move around and we just wanted to make sure that he saw everything. Um, his recommendations, uh, I shouldn't say recommendations, he has some options for us to take a look at. Um, what would need to happen is the uh, wood structure that's under those current bleachers is rotting. And in some places, the bleachers don't even set, uh, the face of the bleacher doesn't even set on the wood platform underneath it. It's sort of like it's floating above there. So that needs to be demolished, and that needs to be just taken out. That structure is old, and it's not in good repair, so it needs to be taken out. His recommendation is that be a cement pad placed underneath the bleachers, wherever the bleachers are and however many sections there are. Um, then a new wood structure be built. And the question was asked by one of the board members when I talked to them today about why wood again. And his comment was, well, wood lasted a long time and it's economically feasible to put wood under bleachers versus steel structure, which he said is extremely expensive. Um, I think the board's opinion has been to keep the rises elevated, not to set them on the ground, because that had been a discussion was about taking that wood structure out and setting them on the ground. I think the board's feeling has been to keep them elevated, that are public like that. And so the tear out of the current wood structure and installation of concrete, concrete would be the school's, um, that would be the school's process to get taken care of. Then he'd move in and put a wood structure under and either repair bleachers and or replace with new sections. So his recommendations are the following. And he told us, the first option, he said, will be the cost of all new, seven new sections. There are seven 14-foot sections of bleachers out there right now. And he said, I'll give you a cost for seven sections of new bleachers because that ought to be the place that you look at. He said, it's not what I'm telling you you need to do. I'm saying then you need to compare other costs so that you see if those are even feasible to do. 
So a full replacement with aluminum um, up to 2008 code, uh, approximately 10 rows by 100 feet is $65,000. Option two is to install new bleachers in place of the existing bleachers, but instead of 100 feet of bleachers right at that section, put in 70 feet that would meet code, and then take the, uh, the present bleachers and rebuild those into a 30-foot section at the finish line. So there's the 30 feet of bleachers, bleachers at the finish line and 70 feet of bleachers where there currently are bleachers. There'd still be 100 feet, they'd be split. The 100-foot um, section right now would be new bleachers and the um, bleachers that would be at the start-finish line would be reconstructed by taking pieces from the seven sections and, and um, bringing those up to code. Option three is almost the opposite of that. It would be um, taking 50 to 60 feet um, of the old bleachers and leaving them where they're at, and he calls it cannibalizing, taking off aluminum pieces and adding them to make them meet code, but at the start-finish line, put 30 feet of new bleachers, and that's about $40,000. Option four is to leave all seven sections where they're at um, and repair the existing bleachers to bring them up to code, um, build a new wood structure under them like he would for any of those, and the cost for, for that option is $36,000. Um, he said, if I were, if you just said to me, what would I recommend that you do? He said, I would recommend, that says option two or three, and it actually should say option one or two um, on there when, when I talked with him. His, his option choices were option one, which was new bleachers, or option two, um, which is that, um, that business of really taking a look at 70 feet of uh, new bleachers and then reconstructing um, 30 feet. Um, suggestion, he would suggest that we quit hauling um, bleachers over the softball field just because the more we move them, the more um, trouble that we can have with them. Cost of the new section would be $15,000. Um, he would put aluminum planking, um, which would be the walkway that's currently wooden, and he just explains that the aluminum planking that he uses four light planks for the walkway. Um, he said all work is completed under the direction of his company. Uh, he'd be on the site for the duration of the project to perform and coordinate work. Uh, he said aluminum prices, this is his price today based on aluminum. If it's six months before we decide to do something, aluminum might change in price, and so he'd have to give us a different quote if we were uh, interested in doing business with him. And I think Dave can verify this. When he was there that day, he was very flexible in terms of working with district clubs or school staff or local contractors to get the work done. It wasn't, I, I come in and do everything. He said, if, if you want to get some people to work with me to put that wood structure on, under my direction, he said, I'm more than happy to work with volunteers or school people to do that. Um, and he said that he um, just needs to answer, he'll ask to answer any questions that we have. Um, I called him a couple of times today so I could get more information related to this. Um, and I think it's open for discussion. Dave brought up a question about the um, opinion by the um, insurance company. He'd like to see another opinion by someone in the same capacity. If you look at this page right here um, in your packet, it's, it's from BMC Insurance Company. And I want to emphasize again, it isn't just that I called someone. Larry Readout, the consulting engineer, is who works for the insurance company that carries our insurance. So if I call the insurance company, if I call Larry Payton, this is who Larry contacts to talk to the school. If you look in down toward the bottom of that letter, the paragraph starts with some repairs. You see that part? Well, some repairs and relocation of individual bleacher sections are possible. It's important to consider the following International Code Council criteria under alterations and repairs. Alterations and repairs to any tiered seating shall conform with the requirements of this standard for new construction. Dave's comment had been that, you know, we should be grandfathered in, I think was mm -hmm. uh, how you described that. But I've had two current experiences with bleachers, one at Wall Lake View Auburn and one here. And the message has been the same, that once they need to have some work done to them, they have to be brought up to current code. You don't fall under the same old code with any of that.